Yo, Mana Squad, if you like any of the cards you see in today's video, make sure to hit up the affiliate link down below to TCG Player. You can help look up some of your local game stores in the process and help show the channel some love. And you know you got to look good while you play in order to play good. So make sure you hit up our link to Into the AM as well. We have the discount code down in the description below. Look, you got to listen to Kenneth the Heathen. He always says something about dripping in space and, and dead screaming. I, we don't know what it means, but, but, but do what the man says. And last but not least hit up heavy play heavy play is going to have some of the nicest play mats and deck boxes out there their magnet system between their deck box and dice trays and play mat is amazing especially if you're playing at like bars restaurants stuff like that you got to get up and move there is no better way to keep all your stuff together and you can show the channel some love in the process stay petty Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Command Center, where we like to put our favorite commander, maybe even yours, front and center. And you know we can't do it unless we play those three spooky letters. What are they today, Hadoukan? It stands for Evil Dead Hater. You know what? I'm going to be a thousand percent honest. I didn't get the movie, and I honestly didn't like the show. I think both of them pretty much suck. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my boomstick. But before we go down that alley... uh. We're talking about the new set coming out, uh, Dusty Trail, um, the Dust Marat, something born in the dirt, uh, born in the Bane said it best. I was born in the dust. Anyway, what are we talking about? <laughs> is it Dust Morn? Is that is it with a T? It's Dust Morn. It's just dusty. Yeah, that's 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 Texas and Alabama both. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Texas and Alabama is scarier than any horror movie nah, ever. Just dusty as hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. So, uh, yeah, what are we talking about today, Sid? Are we, are we, we, so I guess we'll kick it off with Sid. You and I had a conversation that everyone got to hear with our initial thoughts with previews after the first. I think that was the first day. We literally got in there like day one to talk about kind of what had started. Um, but Ken didn't get a chance to. And we need to get some of Ken's thoughts, and it's also been about a week at this point. So I want to, I want us all to jump into kind of everything that's been previewed since we have at this point. I want to say a good chunk of this set has to be previewed. I don't know how much is left, but I, I can't imagine there's really much more at this point. Yeah, I would say about maybe 70, 80 percent of the set has been revealed so far. It looks like we got a lot of the legends out here. Um, we also even have the pre-con uh, commanders, the faces of those commanders at least uh, already revealed, and we know what those cars do. Uh, so we got a pretty good chunk to talk about. So I say we just jump into like what we're seeing as far as these cycles. What are we feeling as far as the art and flavor? How how are we feeling about the set? Just the general health so far. And did Wizards take things too far or not far enough? Or do we have questions? So, um, yeah, I definitely have some questions. Um, or just not even we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. So one thing I guess to say before we kick it off is this is more of a, I guess, almost like an informal, like you get to sit with us and see our reactions to a lot of this stuff because some of the, one of these cards we're going to talk about got previewed like an hour ago. So you kind of got to get a real time reaction to how we feel about things, uh, which means our takes are going to be even worse than usual, which is so good. And I'm going to misevaluate cards even more than I normally do, which is an exciting thought. It's almost impressive. I think. I'm going to be a thousand percent. I'm excited. I'm just still recovering from uh, last week's Dragon Con. I haven't seen anything in this set. I literally just start, saw stuff <laughs> like two seconds where they said we about to do this episode. So if you think uh, what I'm about to say is anything rehearsed or researched, you are clearly mistaken and don't know how this show runs. <laughs> you better hold hey, on to people your want butts. things that are researched and rehearsed they're they're in the wrong place i hope they know that but if not uh make a left turn <laughs> you're not you're not coming to the right place hold on right. to your butt so always it's just a fact of life do it every day always be careful um you don't know when uh taco bell is going to come shooting out it's a it's a it's a it's a fact of life <laughs> that's, but, that's, a, that's what it turns <laughs> into an expressway <laughs> 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 all right so speaking of horrifying things let's talk about some of this the, the the cycles in this set so from what we can gather so far it looks like the two major cycles are going to be the avatar horrors which are these overlords and the rooms the, uh, that's what i'm gathering as it's going to be the two major things so we'll start with these avatar horrors because I think these, to me, are like the highlights of what we've seen so far. They seem to be kind of like the the titans of the set. They seem really exciting, really fun. 
Um, so just to give a brief preview of them, and we'll put them up on the screen kind of as I read them out. They have a monocolored one in each color. All of these creatures have the impending mechanic. They are enchantment creatures. And then if you do them for play them for impending, they're basically enchantments until that countdown stops. And they're these big enchantment creatures that have ETB and attack triggers. So they really are just like the Titans, which is great. Um, you know, some one makes tokens, one draws you cards, one deals damage, another one does stuff with lands. Like it's all it's very much Titans, just in, in a different font, essentially. Um as a as a core cycle for this set, how do y'all feel about this? Because I know for me, I feel like Titans, Primordials, all those are the most iconic, uh, Gear Hulks are like the most iconic cycles for Commander for me. They're all like five, six, seven mana. They all have these big splashy effects. And, you know, in some cases, all the green ones get banned, whether it's Sylvan Primordial or uh, Primetime. But... I want to exist in a commander where Titans, Primordials, and Gear Hulks are played all the time. Those are my favorite commander games, and I think these are kind of feeling. I'm feeling the same vibes. Uh, some of them are power crept versions of previous ones. Shout out to the uh, the red one, which is literally just Inferno Titan, but like, let's make it better. It's 2024. We have to just make it a better Inferno Titan. Um, how do y'all feel, Ken? I'm gonna let you process for a minute. Said, let's throw it to you first about kind of your overall feelings on the cycle. I'm okay with the uh, cycle of these these uh, creatures. I would say they're a little bit toned down from the usual cycle that we normally get. Um, I would even say that the the red one that you just mentioned, I, w I wouldn't even call it a better um, uh, Infernal Titan. I, I think it's a, a worse Infernal Titan. Uh, it only hits a single target. Granted, it is more damage with four damage to any target. So honestly, this is really just a flame tongue Kavu for six or four. Uh, so I mean, either way, uh, have have your cake. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I at least like that, um, Infernal Titan can, can ping individual targets. Uh, if I want to ping two different players, I can, if I want to ping two, three different creatures, I can. Mm. Um, so I like you're, you're able to split it up that way. So yeah, I think that these, um, uh, these, these avatar horrors are definitely scaled back from what we normally saw, saw from previous cycles of, of, uh, whether you want to call them Titans or gear hulks or whatever. Um, Derek, what are you, what are you thinking? Or do you want to pass it to Ken? I'll, I'll yeah i'll kind of bounce off that real quick before we throw it to ken i you know what you're right i did not even think about that i don't think i've ever split an inferno titan damage before i'm usually all just like bolting something i uh, to be honest i didn't even know that was on the card <laughs> I played that so many times i just immediately bolt something and don't ask any questions i think all the other ones uh green is also a very annoying one i think green is going to be just because every time it etbs or you get those tapped land tokens um so it's just that the ramp is going to get really obnoxious but even then one land per attack isn't the worst thing to have to deal with there it's it's very interactable so i'm uh, i'm all on board with all I, of them I, I, I think i love the naivete yeah. of all this we, like you act like we don't exist in a world where parallel lives exist this they they just made prime time a little harder like they, I, like well, we, we live in a world where spelunking exists we live in a world where emulator vigor exists we live in a world where there's multiple token doublers and you just sat there and let that come out of your mouth hole look this is a whole goddamn problem Okay, let me tell you this. We're going into this right now. This is my first time seeing these cars, and I haven't seen creatures like this since I ate that self sandwich and I left in my car in my hot car for five hours. It was still pretty tasty, but I still think I saw some things. Shut up, Derek. I know germs and bacteria, but it was still delicious. Any you, you will eat pizza off a couch two days later. You goddamn right I will. And you know what? It will still be tasty. The microwave will kill it. So going back to what I said. <laughs> That is not science. That's not how this works. Science. <laughs> My grandma say just pray over it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking there. First of all, it's the art that's killing me on this. All right. I like how they deep uh, they touch and like a lot of the Eldritch abominations, especially when you get into the blue one, the overlord of the flood pits. I love when it uh, it, it actually touched into uh, like a lot of the um uh, like the like fairy tale lore when it comes to the green one like they hit there's a lot of uh, uh when it gets to the red one there's a lot of um dante divine comedy reference especially when it comes to wrath like i and there's also it looks like some some uh very steampunk references as well so they and then the white one has more like mummy references from what i appear and this is just the first look into it so i like how they touched various aspects of horror they knew what they were doing 
And I really need for them to go and check into every one of these artists' basements because they got something going on that we need to talk about. I need every last one of them to pee in a cup. <laughs> we can, we'll get on that immediately. One, the other thing I want to mention, one, uh, the, I think that Over, Overlord, you mentioned both. I think you mentioned Primetime, potentially Sylvan. Primetime is such a problem because it's non-basics. The fact that this just makes you like regular land tokens with no other abilities... Like, if Primetime just got you two basic lands, it wouldn't be banned. But the fact that this one is like, I'm going to get you one land, and even if you double it, it's still you're just getting these basic tokens. And I think that's nice in the, in the sense of, like, it's easy to interact with. The thing that's so interesting about these, though, is I love Titans. One of my favorite of the cycles, I love uh, the Gear Hulks of, of these types of cycles because they have the added thing of being artifacts. They have this thing where, like, you know, the the Titans and the Primordials, very specifically, they're almost all in these, like, big reanimator decks or, like, these big stompy decks. What I love about the, the Gear Hulks is they also go into big stompy decks, but you also get these artifact synergies. So you might have them in artifact decks. You might have them in, like, decks you wouldn't otherwise just play stompy stuff in. Wait a minute. These have this whole enchantment sub theme. Wait a minute. Yeah. These aren't legendary? No. No. So they... <laughs> Why, 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 Which why, I appreciate. Why are we doing this? Why? Why are we doing this? We act like why? Why are we doing this? So I, 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 I'll. So with them not being legendary, that does give a point to Ken's point um, that that they can be copied and doubled, and they can do what they do twice as well. I guess. So here's. <laughs> but here's, I, I like that because it's like I mean you Ken you talk so much shit about it, but Frost Titan just you know tap that ass last time one of the last time i played it against you because i had a bunch of copies of it and it wasn't legendary which enabled that so i i like that they're not just immediately throwing legendary onto it but the thing i was going to say just to finish my point was the fact that these are enchantments with this impending mechanic all of a sudden you have enchantment synergies you have these time counter synergies you have all these other things you can do with these creatures in addition to just being great stompy cards for a reanimator deck or something like that or like a kiki jiki type deck those types of things so I love the like the nuances thrown onto it. So at a base level, it's a fun. They're all basically fun, fair cards. But you have these extra mechanics added on to make it better in like a, a number of decks. Ken, you, but you, you to go back to you. So you would prefer. It sounds like you would like legendary versions of these to try to Hell like. Oh yeah, make it make balance yeah, it. balance it out. You know, make it fair and balanced. Oh, uh, honestly, the only one that sucks is the white one. Real hot take. It's just like a better grave type, or slightly more mana. Like I, I, it's been there, done that, done that before. I mean, the only problem is like the only my only issue with it is that it creates two white insect tokens that don't really, you know, synergize in those colors. Like when ti with, with grave tight with gra with uh, grave titan, it created two zombies which could synergize with the deck. Yeah, this it, it's it, it, insects normally are in green. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I guess it's a, the, the, just not the immediate synergy there, but I will, I, I don't know, overall, I think, again, I think it's a good thing, because it is, like, kept in check, like, it's not making angels, and then, oh, it's just synergizing with everything white. Um, this is how I know y'all are sleeping. I'm gonna tell you which one is the busted one, and it's hiding in plain sight, the Overlord of the Flood Pits. That's the one that is going to go bonkers. That is going to go stupid. I can see it, like, Cart, mm, 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 that is going to go nuts. As a matter of fact, I predict this right now. Mark my words, it's going to appear in lesser formats. Yeah, um, I'm blanking on the name, but the blue spell that lets us uh, copy a target creature five times if you play pay the uh, right to replication. Right to replication. Right, yeah, right to replication on that thing. Nasty. Granted, that's exactly what. Granted, that's exactly what we did with the uh, Frost Titan. <laughs> you don't even have to do that. <laughs> exactly. You don't even have to do that. Like, there's, like, Persist that'll bring this back from the graveyard for two mana. There's, like, there's so many ways. And then once this hit the battlefield, it goes stupid. Like, one of the best mechanics, period, is drawing you cards. But the the drawing in itself gets you ahead, or gets you ahead of the game. I do think Ken might be on to something. I say it every now and then, but... The Overlord of the Flood Pits, the blue one. Uh, we're missing one key word on there. It has flying. I, th I think it's going to get in there more more often than not. Uh, but I do want to push us along to the next cycle yes. of cards. I um, think we wanted to talk about those rooms, right, Derek? We do. I think I, I think we can close it. Basically, we all have very positive thoughts about these uh, these 
horrors though the 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 overlords we all regardless of which ones we think are powerful it's a very fun and exciting cycle so i'm super pumped about these and getting to play these now the rooms the rooms are a newish mechanic so uh ken we'll get you caught up too because yes dragon con is like a portal to a different world essentially ken has been in a different dimension for like a week so we need to bring him back to to the normal normal dimension so rooms are essentially these they, they almost look like the split cards from like Amonkhet or like the split cards from like old Ravnica's or stuff. I forgot what the OG split cards were from. And you have two, two halves of the card. You can cast either of them. And then once it's in play, you can pay the mana cost of the other side to open the door to the other room and essentially have both of those effects in play. <laughs> so it, it's essentially giving you two cards it's essentially a two for one and it's instead of like aftermath where it has to go to the graveyard or it's like sorceries it's two enchantments essentially built into one which is all right. a lot going on all right i gotta hear ken's immediate thoughts and then i'll go next <laughs> yeah just yeah exactly just to the, the setup itself i'm sorry this is dumb this is dumb just put it on just put it on the back of the car why did you even do this this is so dumb okay i'm sorry how does this work again? i'm sorry why are you explaining my brain just stopped working all right, you may enter the a room Maybe. card. It's literally called a room card. I thought you were mispronouncing it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I do that a lot, so it's a fair assumption to make. But still, no, it it is called a room. It's called the kitchen or the bathroom. You know what? This should be called the bathroom because it's full of shit. Um, when you unlock the door, how do you unlock the damn door? Um, you, you may cast that. Can't. Have. That door unlocks the battle. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, as a sorcery, you may pay mana to unlock the door. To unlock it, to lock. Wait, what? I, I I don't care anymore. I'm stop. I'm done. I don't. I, I, yeah. So basically, yeah. You pay the mana cost for one half, and then at any point at sorcery speed, you can pay the mana cost for the other and have both effects. It's almost like the classes, essentially, where you can you pay it, play it, and you can upgrade it to another class. The difference is you get to pick which one comes in first, and it's it's a it's classes with extra this steps. Is I guess stupid. is the best this way to is dumb. It. This is literally classes with extra steps. Why are we doing this? Did they did they really need to do this? This is literally a. <laughs> okay my turn all right so this okay yeah <laughs> so at the beginning i said i had some questions about things it sounds like ken is almost there too yeah. like i i get how to open a room how to open the unlock the door to another room or whatever here's my here's my complaint a uh, very small complaint uh every so often magic is asking us to keep track of things that they don't really give us the ability to keep track of one of these things mm. now is going to be keeping track of which room and how many rooms are open. Because now when you cast yeah. that spell, your opponents at the table have to know which side of the room is open or which door is open or whatever when you cast a spell. You have to keep track of it. And I'm saying you have to keep track of it because there's no indicator on which which one has been done when you cast it. No, see, uh, no, Turns no, can no, go sir. by. Said they're gonna give you a key token that you're gonna put on the card to symbolize which one is open. Shut up. All right. So <laughs> I'm saying all this because um there is a card I see in here, uh promising stairs, uh for two and a three. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep surveil one, you win the game if there are eight or more different names among unlocked doors of rooms you control. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who was keeping track of this <laughs> i mean that's a that is a val valid question there's a goddamn door called the grand entryway and it's called the elegant rotunda you're paying five mana for a one one to put two counters on it look uh, uh, so i guess I, there I, are like the headlining I, quote unquote rooms if if those are <laughs> more helpful there there's a set of mythic rooms essentially for for the for each mono color which may help as far as giving more because i feel like with a lot of new mechanics, the obviously the commons and uncommons are more for limited, so I don't know if that helps at all. Uh, Derek, you said a word, and I, I almost physically attacked you. You said a mythic <laughs> room. <laughs> I, I, I almost, I almost ringed through this through this camera to choke you for saying those words. A mythic room. It sounds like you really like this mechanic, like a lot. <laughs> you like it so much. <laughs> All right, so I'll give my thoughts. No. <laughs> I'm about to take this card to the mythic bathroom and wipe my booty with it. That's what I'm going to do with it. I do, I do not care for this mechanic. 
I am tired of keeping up with extra zones because does this sit? <laughs> so does the other half of the room sit in an unoccupied zone that we can never see? That's a, um, that's uh, and yeah, I, I, so it is an enchantment. So it's just on the battlefield. But you're right. How the indicator of what's unlocked, what's locked. Um, so I, I guess my my thoughts. I'm not quite as negative as y'all two are, but I like the cards in isolation. If you showed many of these cards in isolation, I think they're really cool. They give you more options. I love MDFCs. I love having options on cards. I agree with you. The biggest problem I have in Commander nowadays is tracking everything, and this is going to make it even more of a headache to track things because. You sitting at a table, let's say you have a wonderful friend like Ken that you're playing with that doesn't bring tokens anywhere. Already you're trying to keep track of, okay, what is this ketchup packet? What is this like toenail clipping? What is this like what whatever I got left over on the side of the table? What do these represent? And then all of a sudden you got, you mentioned all the different zones. You might have a companion, you might have this. Then all of a sudden this is there. My issue is if you're in a four player commander game on like turn like six and there's a million things happening, how many people are going to remember what, what part of the room is unlocked? Uh, so I guess the easiest way to do it is like to put a face down card covering half of it or something like that to indicate what part is open and this and that. But I agree in the sense of I think at a face level, they're fine. I probably won't play them just because I don't want to track anything else. <laughs> like I want to keep the stuff I have to track to a, a minimum nowadays. And while these seem fun, I, I agree. I don't want to track anything else. I'm not the biggest fan of MDF. I think McDonald's food is pretty disgusting. But it comes down to uh, Schrodinger's uh, room. Does the room exist before or after you pay for it? Does, does it just exist in a nebulous void? Is the room dead or alive until you actually pay for it? We don't know. Got so many so many questions to answer but yeah i i'm i'm with y'all though i the mechanic itself i'm iffy on i do so, so to get into something like one of these rooms uh buffs all your creatures which is cool one's like a panharmonicon like a better panharmonicon because it just all, all triggered abilities are doubled for seven mana you have like a full reanimate effect on one so there are like just cool effects on these um but yeah i just at least with MDFCs for me, and I, I, I typically stick to like a land one side spell on the other, it's a one-time decision you make most times, and then it's just there. If I play an MDFC, MDFC as a land, unless I have like a bounce land or something, it's just there. I don't have to think about it anymore. Or if I play it as a spell, it's a spell. Like I don't need to track it after the fact too much. Um, so I think with these, if one like synergizes so well, so like the red one let you exile cards that you can play until end of turn and then let you play things from exile for free once a turn. You know, if you're out there with like a Faldorn deck or something and you're playing stuff and it it fits so well, then it's like, well, maybe I, I want to put it in here, but like using the black one as an example, um, it has the effect of one, one door or one side of it. Whenever a creature dies, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And the other side, when you unlock this door, return all creature cards from a graveyard to the battlefield. And honestly, nine times out of ten, I'm going to try to find one of these effects on an individual card. And even though it's objectively worse to do that because you're not getting both, again, it's less to think about. So um, I think it's cool, but I'm with y'all. I, I, I don't want to track anything else. I need my commander games to be more simple and not more complicated. And it's funny because I think this is this is like an... And I'm curious to get y'all's thought on this. Do you think this is an effect of these inherently being complicated? Because I don't think it's the case. It's just like a... Almost like a... Uh, the last drop that like overflows a cup essentially right or like the, the straw that breaks the camel's back whatever whatever the analogy is because i think in, in isolation i don't think it's that complicated but i agree with you when i think about this in relation to everything else it seems like too much i, I think somebody at wizards was trying to justify their job and they was like hey greg we need you to come up with another mechanic and he was like oh man uh 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 Doors. <laughs> go. What about doors, Greg? Uh, go in them. Uh, you okay, Greg? Yeah. What's that on your nose? Powder sugar. <laughs> what your donuts at? <laughs> All right. So we don't get Greg fired. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, here's my thing. I don't think we're going to see these cards again. By these cards, yeah. I mean rooms. Um, I think these might be specific to dust mourn like a set specific cycle yeah, yeah um which in a way kind of bothers me because like there were so many more opportunities for battles to show up at some point and we were kind of iffy on battles but there were places where they could have shown up and ha could have 
uh, been great as far as being flavor and added to the set itself, Lord of the Rings specifically. Um, rooms, I, I don't know where, of course, I can't foresee what the next sets are specifically as far as where they're going to take place uh, on the on those planes. But like, yeah, rooms is a very specific to a to a house. To a, it could have. Hell, you could have even had rooms in the detective set. I, I I refuse to call it whatever it was because it wasn't Ravnica. Um, is is the detective set could have had rooms, <laughs> or 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 yeah. They, they, in in that particular case, they had cases uh, for you to solve. So I don't think we're gonna see cases show up again. Um, so yeah, these are kind of yeah. I think it's just some one offs that I think with more love could be better. But at the same time, since I feel like we're gonna get them in more of this uh, single set. I'm I'm not that big on them other than the ones that are throwing out some powerful effects like warp space, which is once per turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the spell um, forecast that um, uh, to pay the I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm probably going to use a card like warp space, uh, the, the four and two red side that once per turn you can pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast from exile that's that's perfect in a lot of decks um whether they're uh yeah. especially if they're focused on the exile like you said earlier Derek. uh but some of these others i can probably skip over whether they're mythic or not it just depends on what that deck is specifically doing and you're not really going to have multiple of rooms in a in a deck unless that somehow is going to be your thing uh which is why i'm kind of confused on how that you win the game if you have eight or more different names among rooms you unlock. Because who's who's gonna make that room deck? I, I want to know who you are. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm, I'm good. Well, well, the main reason where we're not gonna see these again is because Greg is going to rehab. That's right. They got tired of his shenanigans and they booked him against his will to go detox from all the uh, hot glue that he's been sniffing. Because basically, he's been doing that in a in a tad bit of peyote to come up with something like this. We love you, Greg. We believe in you, Greg. You're going to pull through. You owe me five. You, you. Still me, you got you your back. Owe, you still owe me money, Greg, and I'm going to bust your ass as soon as I see you. <laughs> that's just how Ken said he looks. That's how Ken expresses love. So that, that's just a normal expression there. So I, I, will, I do want to close it with, with one last thought. And obviously we're bringing a commander perspective because I know, like, there's been a lot of conversation about sets being too commander focused, about, like, honestly, like, just forget commander exists and just design a set. We'll take what we want from it. And I do want to express that with rooms. I think these are awesome for limited. One of the things with limited, I think that really like defines sets or like really unique things that make you feel like you're in the set. So I do think like opening a room and playing one of these in like a draft deck has to be so much fun because it's like, I feel like they're really cool archetypes. They can help like define and they're really powerful. So I feel like they can really like make or break draft games or like uh, sealed games. So I love these cards in general in the set. I just, I don't want to use them for commander, which is not a bad thing. Honestly, I wish that was the case more of the time. I wish there were more cards that I saw and said, this is the coolest thing ever. I have no interest in playing it. The more that happens, the happier I am because I don't want to learn any more card names. So um, yeah, I love the cards is what they're doing, but yeah, I just, I need to track less. So I'm, I'm with y'all on that. Um, we've we've kind of talked about the main site, the cycles and stuff. I want to give it maybe like 10 minutes or so. I do want to talk about just some of our just favorite things that have been revealed it could be for any reason if you see a art that you love if you got a, a legendary creature that sticks out to you they're like i need to build that asap i already ranted about clown man so i won't do that anymore just some of the highlights for us in this set because this i i will get into vibes later but yeah let's just jump into it ken you already got one ready to go so what what's one of the things that's sticking out to you so far just getting a first taste so of one i'm looking back at is come back wrong uh i call it the quentin tarantino card because it's going straight for your feet uh <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 it, it, this is this guy Quentin Tarantino. As a matter of fact, the art looks like Quentin Tarantino. He's like, oh, you know, take these shoes off. Anyway, uh, I like the card because of the applications that it has, especially that now because commanders go to graveyards now. Uh, yeah, this can get nasty real quick. And what is the? I'm trying to find comeback. Comeback wrong. wrong. It's, that? oh, that's it's, the one that's two in a black uh, destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Oh yeah, you could just steal commanders. Yes. Yes, you yeah, can. That's, uh, that's spooky. Mm -hmm. And it is. Yeah. There. There. Shout, shout out to Quentin Tarantino. I guess. All right. Said. <laughs> so, do you have any uh, immediate? 
uh, kind of cards that have jumped out to you in the last week or so uh, that have just been really highlights for you? Yeah, I don't know if this one's out was out previously when we first did our um, video, uh, but Screaming Nemesis. First of all, that name, love it. Uh, two in a red spirit uh, haste. When it deals damage, it did. I'm oh, sorry. When Whatever Screaming Nemesis is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, it cannot gain life for the rest of the game. So, that is mono red shuts off life. Uh, I think there's an already another Forever. card like this, uh, Stinger Lash or something like that. Uh, Sting Lash or Stinger Lash. Um, but yeah, a, a card that just just does damage like it doesn't have to do combat damage it just just does the damage and too bad no more life gain if that was your if that was your plan and it's for the rest of the game granted another thing you have to keep track of somehow some way but um <laughs> is there oh believe me that player that has life gain is gonna remember you don't have to worry about tracking that because if you're playing a life gain deck or a food deck and someone does that to you you will remember you remember that six months from now that that person did that to you <laughs> Uh, another quick uh, mono red one that stuck out to me was um, I call this the Ogre Battle Driver Dog. Um, where did it go? This was Enduring Courage for two and two red. Exact same cost of um, Battle Ogre Driver, but it's Dog Glimmer. It says that whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield, gets plus two plus O oh, and gains haste until end of turn. If this creature dies, guess what? It comes right back under your control as an enchantment. So you got to kill it two times. You give your creatures haste. That is two times. <laughs> that is so good because Ogre Battle Driver is a great card, but I can't remember the last time I found a spot for it in a deck for that reason. For four mana, and creatures just die constantly. It's hard to find a spot for that when there's so many other token effects that you want to run. So that's awesome. I, I really like that one too. All right, so I have a couple quick ones that I have just really that have really stuck out to me. It just immediate excitement for. Um, one's called Grab the Prize. Um, it's the one the art is just absolutely terrifying, but it's a two minute spell. It's a sorcery. It's an additional cost. You discard a card, draw two cards. And if the discarded card wasn't a land, it deals two damage to each opponent. I'm a sucker for any effects. All of the black effects that are like draw a few cards, lose life or any of the red effects that are discard a card, draw two. I will put a million of those into my decks. I just love the card velocity that it gives you. But the fact that this one has a terrifying clown on it. And you have the upside of like dealing damage. So if you have any sort of like combat damage matters, this goes in reanimator decks, damage matter decks. It's just a common that's going to go in a million decks, which I love. The other one that we have to talk about, because it was like one of the headliners for the set, is the Meat Hook Massacre 2. And they nailed it. The, the, the biggest thing is they needed to win flavor-wise. And the Meat Hook Massacre 2 is XX and four black pips. And then so whenever it enters... Uh, each player sacrifices X creatures. So two X's, you got to pump a whole bunch of mana in this. If you put six mana into it, you get every player sacrifices one creature. And then it's the enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do return that card under your control onto the battlefield with a finality counter, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they may pay three life. If they don't return that creature card under your control with a finality counter on it. So basically you can reanimate your stuff once for free once it dies by paying life and your opponents have to pay life to not give you their stuff it is basically exactly what we needed from a sequel in that it's twice as expensive it's literally twice the cost and just objectively worse and that's a hundred percent what a sequel needs to be it's <laughs> so super expensive nowhere near as good and it's it's so on flavor for a horror movie sequel it's so good and it's still a playable card like it's still a strong effect but it's just four black pips in any deck like that's I mean, that's more than Grave Pact just to get the enchantment side of this. Like, if you're not mono black, you're going to have a hard time casting this in a lot of cases. So I love it. I think this is just a perfect magic card. It's going to be obnoxious to play against. It still has that, like, Meat Hook Massacre aura to it because it's an incredibly powerful effect if it can land. But yeah, they nailed so much of the flavor on that. Um, all right, cool. So those are some of the just quick highlights that we have. I, I, I got two. Oh, I have two. Ken's got another I got one. two more. Sorry. Uh, first of all, oh, you're good. Is, no, you're good. It's fear of abduction. First of all, the car art spooky as hell, and I love it. But the fact that it literally abducts two creatures and just takes them away, and if, and just it, it literally beams them up until it goes away, and then it just puts them back like nothing happened. 
back into your head. I like that is on brand because they never come back the same. Probing anyway, and the, the <laughs> like, and the other car is Toby Beast Friender. Now, when I saw this, I was like, "Hmm, this looks very familiar." I don't know if you guys ever seen this movie called Monsters Inc., but it looks like what a little girl says. You know what? I want to be with the Monsters team, and I want to help them scare up. Now, it it literally looks like. They, they, the Sully and them fused together, and she just decided to be the pack leader. And she literally invites them to other children's houses to scare them. We called that out in the initial video. Yeah, a hundred percent. That is Monsters Inc. They literally were just like make Sully with a different font, and just you know what, just take the same little girl and just put her in the image. Uh, I do think it might be a boy. That's fine. Oh, or the same little child. Yeah, it, it's yeah. We call, Kids, call, call him a girl last ne- time. Neutral, too. gender neutral dressing. <laughs> well, let's use that as a pivoting point because I did want to talk about legendary creatures real quick and some of the highlights. Because obviously, we talk about how a set's defined cycles, and at this point, legends with com- at least for commander, so many things you remember about a set are, are from commanders that you want to build. So, Ken, do you have any legendaries that immediately stick out? Because I have two that I'm really excited to talk about. I, not Jolly Balloon. We already got into the Jolly Balloon Man, but I'll skip that. But there's some other legends that I'm actually really excited about in this set. The legend I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this legend because it pisses me off. Originally, I was going to choose my girls and moan because of the prime number thing. I think it's pretty awesome. But no, I chose this because it pisses me off. Our Arabella abandoned doll, you lazy bastards. You couldn't do we all know this is Annabelle, but y'all didn't even try. And the power and I get why it's power two or less because all those movies suck and that's what they got rated. Anyway, I chose this because of the pure laziness. They didn't even try to hide what this was. Annabelle movies are great. The Conjuring Universe is a great series of movies. I've watched them multiple times. So much fun to watch. The the demon thing in Annabelle, like the horn demon thing, super cool. I forgot its name. Sound, I, don't know, I sound like a bad fan. I love everything see, about see, the Annabelle movies. See, this is why I don't believe you when you talk about leaving food out for like over an hour because your takes are so bad that I can't even believe you about real information. That's why I leave my food in the car and then go back and eat it because I don't believe you about the bacteria stuff because these are your takes. Oh, that one pains me. Okay, so you, that was actually one of my picks. Was um, was it Arabella? Which yeah, it's literally Annabelle. Such a cool card. Um, not super busted, but there is a deck that can be built around it. It is weird to me that two of the spookiest, coolest cards in this set are Boros and the Jolly Balloon Man and Annabelle. I find that a bit strange. Um, I there's two cards I like mainly for the art, and I really hope I can find fun non-busted things to do with them one of them is not very strong but it's we have a cool scarecrow so we the swarm weaver which is just a great name and the art's great kind of a basic deck but again at this point it's not a bad thing so when it enters the battlefield you get two one one black and green insect creature tokens with flying and as long as there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard insects and spiders you control get plus one plus one and have death touch so if you're like me and you love the card spider spawning and you're want to switch it up from city or whatever else you got going on this is a great commander for like a Halloween style insect spider deck. Super cool. And it by itself is only so strong. So I, I love that. It's kind of the, the the outline for a cool deck. We need more scarecrows. The other one I want to talk about that we talked about this right before, and this was previewed with like within the last few hours. The most messed up looking card in the set, uh, Marvin Murderous Mimic, which is just a terrifying uh, Marvin Murderous Mimic is a two drop artifact. It has all activated abilities of creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. So 99% of the time this is going to be used as a combo piece, but I'm very curious in other ways. Cause so one of my, like the OG commanders that I've always been intrigued by is experiment Kraj. I think that's one of like the coolest cards ever printed in that. Like it has all activated abilities of cards with plus one counters and you can put plus one counters on it. But every, deck list you'll ever find online is a combo machine and i've always wanted to build a version of it that was like a value cool version of that that did awesome things and had no combos this is another commander that gets those same kind of gears turning of okay it's going to be super easy to combo off with this what are what else can you do though and especially because it's in colorless there have to be so many weird whether it's like artifact ability just throw plus one counters around or sacrifice abilities all these different things you can do 
to build the world's like most ridiculous engine of nothingness. And it, I feel like this can enable a whole bunch of weird shit that you can do. Um, and I love that. It's a very simple ability and it just says go wild. It doesn't tell you what direction to go. It just says activated ability. And I, I love that it's not pointing you in a direction. It's just go crazy. And it, it's also the art. It very much sells me. So you, you mentioned a card and I was like, he must be making that damn name up because there's no way somebody named a card the Jolly Balloon Man. Then I looked at that. That is <laughs> horrific. That is pure nightmare fuel. Literally blowing up people's faces. First of all, I, I, for, it looks it gives me it and Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. Like they just decided to, you know, like, we're going to raise children. And that's the offspring that they created. That was horrific. I think I might have peed a little bit. You're talking about a horrific. Literally blowing in the people. Wow. Wow. Like. I'm gonna need a psyche that way. Who's the artist? I need Campbell White. Campbell White, you, you need some help. <laughs> you need to go talk to somebody if you, if this is what you draw to your free time. Jesus Shout Christ, out to Campbell White, because I'm pretty sure they are the artist for my background uh, for Fury. I think they also did the they did the. Uh, mm, mm, I hope I'm completely wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure they did the uh, Evoke Elementals. I'm, in Modern Horizons three for the alternate arts. I need somebody. So, I need somebody to get. Shout out to them. I need them to go get a hook and a straight jacket and. <laughs> and, 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 and so and, Ken, just in case you missed it, yeah, Jolly Balloon Man is my favorite card in the set. It is beautiful. It's amazing. It does everything I love. It's spooky. That's good for but me. now, cause, all right. So we are getting kind of towards the end of the video, and there is a really important thing I want to check because uh, for a set like this, the vibes are so important. So much about like what the the art gives, the card gives, all everything about this set. We need to do a vibe check. Uh, we do need to address something. The Jolly Balloon Man stole said, uh, so we we don't know. If you see a balloon floating somewhere with said's face, it's too late. It, it's already too late. You messed up. You should have helped earlier. Um, but if you hear a cry for help from like a sewer, isn't that where it lives? In the sewer with the little balloons? Um, make sure you immediately go into the sewer, crawl around. It's super safe it, and go save it. Them. It's up to you. It lives on the uh, bottom of the wet floor in the Arby's. <laughs> full circle that that set ends up back at arby's um so all right ken so i'm gonna throw it to you first how do you feel about the vibes of the set because one of the especially in the context of we know we've talked about this so much but the last few sets of having like oh this is the set with cowboy hats oh this is the set with detective hats so this is this does this like kind of beat those allegations it's not just oh it's the set with creepy house or, or is that just what There's it is still the set with a creepy house i just think that this some people just need to some of these artists just need to exercise it, some of their demons and this was the set that they got to do it in. <laughs> that's all i see like i'm looking at some of this stuff like hmm interesting um yeah i, I don't need to be your neighbor <laughs> <laughs> no i i can't i can't fully disagree i I, I do love the vibes of this set. I know, so it was addressed by Wizards in a recent like, Q&A type session where they basically had said they're aware of that they might have been overdoing, and I forgot, I don't want to misquote them, but essentially they had been overdoing the gimmick we were just talking about of here's a character in a cowboy hat. It's the same character. Now they're wearing, you know, beach shorts and it's the beach set. Now we're in a spooky house and they got a magnifying glass. Like they're trying to, they're, they're aware that that's kind of an issue. Obviously, this is something that, you know, sets are designed like years out. So it's not something we'd see a resolution to for a while. I don't get as much of a vibe. I will say in some of the like the heroes or the survivors or whatever they're called in this set, the vibes a little like it, it comes off a little gimmicky to me of like it, some of the things are a little too on the nose. And obviously I'm trying not to, you know, I'm trying to fight my own bias. I love Annabelle. I think it's like the greatest I love those movies, but you know, a little, some comparisons like that are very on the nose as far as like, it's like, Ooh, goofy reference, like as opposed to inherent world building it and making like its own thing. It looks like a secret layer that got out of hand. <laughs> yeah. I can't even, I can't fight you there. Like I'm definitely, I am a sucker for all things spooky. So I'm going to like it probably more than most. And I realize if this set's not, you know, geared towards me, nothing is, but I will say parts of it fit the Jolly Balloon Man. Um, I almost called him Kevin Marvin, <laughs> the, the the little toy dude. Certain things are so like on the money for just peak spookiness, uh, attack in the box. There's so many things that are like very scary and spooky and perfect. 
but it does feel like there is enough of that like gimmicky goofy parts of it that are like in a way weighing it down i i do i I think it's a lot better than what we had in the detective set i think it's a lot better than what we had in the cowboy set and i don't feel as like oh gosh like eye rolling at it um but obviously this doesn't reach the spooky vibes of like an innistrad of or something like that like it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's a horror world in and of itself. It feels like it's a set making horror references. Does that make sense? I guess if I phrase yeah, it like yeah, that, yeah, that, that's why. Where, that's why I was like, it was a it was a janky secret layer because when it came to like the uh, what the when we went to the Prater around with the uh, with uh, Ellis Norrin and Mom and all that uh, and when Sheen, that felt like it was inclusive to the story. This is look like it's just making references. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like this is not a world. Like I would love a movie based in Innistrad. I would go crazy for that if they did like a, a whole I, I could read books and novels about Innistrad. I don't get the same vibes about the, this world that was built again. Yeah, I do agree. I think it was like a the house is almost like a showcase for a bunch of secret layer ideas. Like you said, like references and things like that. So I still like the set I'm positive. I love I love a lot of the cards. I love the vibes, but I, I agree. It's not I think they're moving in the right direction. But uh, I still don't think it's necessarily taking itself seriously enough. I saw something somebody said I, I'm stealing this idea from someone, but I, it's funny that of all the sets in the last year, the cute animal set was the one it took itself most seriously. If that makes it like it built a world and everything about that world was very like in and of itself and stuck. And it felt like a world was being built uh, versus it felt like it, it felt like somebody was exploring their kinks in that one, too. But I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> We don't kink shame over here. Okay, cool. So we'll we'll bring this we'll, we'll call this to a close. Um I guess you any closing thoughts from from all of today's discussion from you can again this is your first really viewing of the set. So not just vibe, but like oh, yeah. how are you feeling about I, getting to explore the set more? I think it's pretty cool. I mean you just have to play the set with the lights on. That's all you gotta do. And yeah, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> Change your underwear. Keep it moving. <laughs> Two things you should always do, because playing magic in the dark or with dirty underwear are both terrible things to do. You, we could barely keep track of cards reading them. Imagine just playing in a in a dark room. Some people just show up playing with just dirty underwear on, which is a... We're not getting into that. But anyway, uh, but, but thank you guys for helping us explore this shit. But this is our very first look into... The, my very first look into this set. Thank you guys for joining us to this uh, incoherent expression of what we discovered. Uh, of course, uh, just some information. We will be at Mag- Magic Con Vegas doing stuff for reasons. So please come and give a shout out. And, you know, bring over, over some of your decks so we can destroy you and laugh at your face and, you know, make podcasts about it as we destroy your soul. Do it. <laughs> Peace.